This week on Worldview, we are going to look at the global search for the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and why the controversial lab leak theory just won't go away. President Biden has ordered a review of intelligence about where the COVID-19 outbreak originated from. The visit by the WHO-led team was subject to intense scrutiny and political pressure. We're 18 months into this pandemic and no one can show where this virus came from. Now, it's been 18 months since the first few cases of the coronavirus, or what is formerly known as the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, the second. SARS-CoV-2, or COVID-19, as it's known, was reported in the Chinese city of Wuhan. After all that time, 168 million cases worldwide, three and a half million deaths, the focus is now returning to just where that virus emerged for, from. And that's for three distinct reasons, particularly. This week, uh, starting from May the 24th at its annual executive meeting, the World Health Assembly of the WHO reviewed the report commissioned by the WHO to look into the zoonotic origins of the virus globally. The 120-page report that was put together by a team of experts jointly conducted by WHO and China, this was just the China component, concluded that the possibility of an animal man transmission or a food chain transmission was actually more likely than that of a lab leak. But more research was necessary to really pin down those origins. Also then this week on May 26th, US President Joseph Biden announced that he was unsatisfied by the inconclusive report that had been put together by US intelligence agencies on the issue and that he was asking them now to redouble efforts to decide really on two different possibilities, whether the virus emerged from human contact with an infected animal or from a laboratory accident. But perhaps what has really opened the debate up especially for the scientific community, is an article in the Bulletin of the Atomic Sciences written by acclaimed science writer Nicholas Wade that made the case on why the theory that the SARS-CoV-2 was in fact a laboratory-made virus, the product of research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, ironically funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health, and led to what was called gain-of-function research, was actually a theory that should not be dismissed as it was last year. In the article, Wade made several assertions, and I'm not an expert. So I will just take a look at not the technical reasons so much, uh, but maybe the more simple ones that actually have attracted interest from non-scientific people as well. Um, firstly, that it has been a year since the original theory of a bat animal human transmission from, for example, the Wuhan wet markets um, was made. But yet no evidence has been proffered by China of the actual animals involved in this process. In comparison, remember, the origins of the SARS-1 virus that hit China in 2003, also then the MERS virus that hit the Middle East or West Asia in 2012, were traced respectively uh, to a horseshoe bat and to a dromedary camel actually fairly soon after by genome sequencing using that. In this case, there appear to be no leads to the animal that first brought SARS to, uh, to humans. The second point it made was that the lab leak theory had been dismissed too early in the pandemic, essentially because of scientists were either compromised or had a conflict of interest, or simply did not want to admit that such research was being carried out and it could be so dangerous to the entire world. We had specifically pointed, actually, to joint research that was carried out by Wuhan Institute's Dr. Shi Zheng Li and the University of North Carolina's Ralph Barrick in 2015 that focused on the ability of bats to infect humans. In fact, they re-engineered a coronavirus in a lab itself. The funding of the studies by the U.S. were subsequently cancelled. But as late as January 2020, remember, the U.S. State Department was still inspecting the Wuhan facilities as part of its funding procedures there. Finally, Wade asked why, if COVID-19 has actually come directly from bats or from bats to an animal, and those bats are not native to Wuhan, why nobody else or no other animal was infected along the way? Because he pointed out that the closest bat caves were about 1,500 kilometers away. Wade concluded that neither the natural emergence nor the lab escape hypothesis can yet be ruled out, but that the lab theory seemed more likely. He also said that given that the U US National Institutes of Health, which were headed by Dr. Fauci, 
had funded Dr. Zhengli's research that neither China nor the US had an actual interest in shedding too much light on these jointly funded experiments that could raise uncomfortable questions about research ethics or even bio-warfare. These are explosive conclusions, but unlike last year, as I said, the lab leak theory is not being dismissed as easily. So what is India's position on the origins of the virus and the controversy around it? Remember, India has consistently called for more investigation, but it has been clear that it is wrong to stigmatize any country by naming a virus on the basis of its origins or, or making it about a political issue. On Friday, India actually issued a statement, its second so far, calling for WHO to conduct those next phase studies now uh, that the team's report spoke of. Uh, in fact, in an indirect criticism of China that has really limited access to the team, it was accused of only allowing them to visit uh, as late uh, as about uh, mid-January to Wuhan for about four weeks. Uh, India, in fact, called for full cooperation from all stakeholders. Let's just quickly take a look at what that WHO report eventually said. It put together four hypotheses, um, gave reasons for and against each one of them, and put out its conclusions. The first, direct zoonotic transmission, also called spillovers, directly from the animal to the man. The second, an introduction through an intermediate host, followed by the zoonotic transmission. Uh, the third, an introduction through the cold chain or, or food chain, the Wuhan wet markets or meat market uh, theory, and the introduction through a laboratory incident. The team concluded that one was likely, two was extremely likely, three was possible, but that four was extremely unlikely. Now, India is also watching the US's report closely, but has stayed away from commenting or wading into the US-China uh, tensions on this issue. Now, remember, the government had its own inquiry last year when it emerged that the Bangalore-based NCBS had also conducted research on bat viruses in Nagaland that looked at zoonotic spillovers. Now, where it got interesting was that the study that was published in 2019 was funded by two universities, but they took their funds from the US Department of Defense uh, through the US Defense Threat Reduction Agency. And that study and the papers actually credited collaboration for, as a researcher from Dr. Shi Zheng Li at the Wuhan Institute. Now, according to sources, an inter-ministry inquiry was conducted into the study that concluded that there were lapses and now new norms are being prepared. Most of all, when India looks at it diplomatically, India and other global leaders must seek to study the origins of the virus conclusively, but also to commit to ensuring that scientific research is not manipulated, particularly for weaponization, and to build safe standards for the future. That will be an imperative as well. Now, you can download and read the entire WHO report on the origins of the virus at the link given here at www.who.int. This week, I actually asked my colleague, the Hindu's deputy science editor, Jacob Koshi, for some book recommendations on this issue. As I said, I'm not really an expert. So here they are. Spillover by Animal Infections and the Next Human Pandemic by David Quammen. Pale Ride, a book about the Spanish flu a century ago by Laura Spinney, and Chinmay Tumbe's Age of Pandemic. That's all we have time for, but do join us again. From the team at Worldview, thanks for watching.